Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we have a fairly big step in the entirety of the Dr. Disrespect Twitch saga. Now, nothing related to Twitch and Dr. Disrespect directly, but instead related to an agreement that Twitch has apparently entered into, which some might call, oh, let's just use the word insane. We'll get back to that word in just a second. If you haven't been following along with virtual legality, we have covered the Twitch bans Dr. Disrespect legal saga now for a number of videos. The very first video that we did on this subject, Dr. Disrespect and the Mystery of the Silent Ban, is still the most popular video that we have ever done on this channel. And in that video, we talked about silence. We talked about contract disputes and how when multiple millions of dollars are on the line between someone like Dr. Disrespect and a very expensive, well-represented company like Twitch owned by Amazon, that what you would expect to see in a contract dispute where one side says that there's a breach of contract and the other says, wait, I'm not sure that there was, is this kind of silence that the lawyers work behind the scenes and Dr. Disrespect is well-represented by those lawyers and by those agents to remain silent. But so many people in the games journalism industry and in the games community in general started pontificating, started speculating on what this particular ban could mean, attaching it to other problems that Twitch was having with Me Too allegations and other issues that were occurring at the same time. And one of the things that we said in this space was that didn't make a lot of sense to us as a corporate lawyer that looks at things like this and says, well, there are a lot of business reasons for something like this to occur. One of the major ones of which was the fact that Microsoft's Mixer project announced that they would be terminating in about a month from that notice, the same week that Twitch decided to ban Dr. Disrespect with nothing more than a blanket generalized umbrella statement that we treat people that violate our terms of service and general community guidelines the same way. So in this video, which again became very popular, I think because it presented a more kind of fulsome corporate look at what might be happening behind the scenes here, one of the things that I said was, I'm not so certain that Ninja and Shroud aren't a part of the story. Now, at the time, there were a couple of reports coming out of 4chan and various other places on the web that suggested that Ninja and Shroud and Dr. Disrespect were actually working on an exclusive new platform and that Dr. Disrespect might have gotten nabbed for breaching his exclusivity agreement with Twitch. Now, I thought that was silly at the start. It's obviously silly now as we get into this story and the other stories that we have so far seen in the intervening months. But one thing I did want to say was that I wasn't sure they weren't still a part of the story because Mixer's collapse and Ninja and Shroud becoming free agents was something that materially changed Twitch's value proposition, both to the Dr. Disrespect contract that they had already entered into earlier this year and the prospective contracts that they could potentially now enter into with folks like Ninja and Shroud, who were otherwise going to receive millions of dollars from Twitch's former competitor in Microsoft for doing nothing, and that might be viable for a little bit lower amount on the open market. As I said in that video, we also talked about the fact that Microsoft completely unexpectedly last week closed Mixer, and that Ninja and Shroud, that they had paid millions of dollars for exclusivity for, were now free to be free agents wherever they liked. And of course, Ninja and Shroud made their customer base on Twitch. So the way this was reported was that Ninja and Shroud could go back to Twitch again. In this space, with a doctor disrespect that causes trouble for you, understand the context of that is that you're Twitch and you're potentially having these thoughts and that maybe doctor disrespect was signed up by you as one of the last exclusivity deals because Ninja and Shroud had already left, that you had gotten left at the altar because you weren't in front of Microsoft buying up those exclusivity deals and now you were left with Dr. Disrespect. And maybe, and this is my opinion, you weren't entirely comfortable with Dr. Disrespect being the face of your brand. So in this space with a Dr. Disrespect that causes trouble for you with a ninja and shroud that maybe you prefer now available, I think you get into a situation where maybe if you are Twitch, you say, okay, this guy, Dr. Disrespect is problematic. How can we get out of our contract because we've signed him on to multiple millions of dollars and how can we get out of that? Both so that we're not affiliated with him anymore and also so that maybe we can sign back up those people 
that are now available to us. Now, this was reported in a number of places on YouTube and elsewhere as Hoaglaw over at Virtual Legality saying that Twitch fired Dr. Disrespect specifically to open up the money to sign Ninja and Shroud. And that was never the intent. Open money is open money. And even if you're giant, even if you're Amazon or you're Twitch and you have cash coming out everywhere, you still want to get money that you think is otherwise being wasted. And I pointed to the fact that Mixer was gone as doing the primary thing, which my video was about, which is lowering the value of an exclusivity deal generally. That what was once potentially worth $15 million to you, or you thought it was in March, when your competitor goes under, is worth a lot less. Maybe six, maybe five, maybe less. And you don't want to be a party to that contract anymore. One of the analogies that I use with a lot of folks on this is if you are a sports fan at all, you are familiar with somebody in a league getting paid way too much because they were the only ones available. And two years into that contract, you look at the $14 million your team is spending on this terrible quarterback and you say, oh, I wish we could get out of that contract. Maybe if your GM is really good, they figure out a way to get out of that contract. But this is very similar. That immediately after signing Dr. Disrespect, Twitch determines that it doesn't have the value that it thought it would be getting out of that contract and now looks to see if they can get out of it. Now, for my efforts in this video and because it became as popular as it did, it was reported on in various places across YouTube and the internet. And one of the things that came out in a couple of places was this basic description of what I had to say. Lawyers' insane theory on Dr. Disrespect Twitch ban to get Ninja and Shroud. Now, I don't consider myself insane, and I don't blame anybody for looking at a story differently and saying, well, that doesn't really match up with the way I see things. As we say in this space, disagreement is the spice of life. Reasonable minds can differ, and we are always happy to have that conversation. But it wasn't insane. It remains not insane. And that became even a larger point as we look at yesterday's news. Michael Greziak, I'm coming home. Shroud is going back to Twitch. And as we would find out in various pieces of reporting throughout the day, Shroud is returning to Twitch exclusively. Gamers around the world posted happy W's in response as reported by The Verge. Shroud, one of the most influential live streamers on the internet, has today announced his triumphant exclusive return to Twitch, the platform that made him famous after a detour to Mixer that possibly netted him a cool 10 million when the site went dark and his contract got paid out. Yeah, the one thing that should be said about everybody that signed a Mixer exclusivity agreement and didn't have any assignability from Mixer to Facebook or wherever else they might want to send you is they made out like bandits. Ninja and Shroud worked for less than a year for Microsoft's Mixer and apparently got full payouts for the term life of the contract exclusivity that they had otherwise agreed to. That's Microsoft being dumb, but it's Ninja and Shroud and their agents being smart. And so now when they're looking at this, I don't suspect that Twitch or YouTube or anyone else is likely to sign exclusivity deals at quite the size and range that we saw when Mixer was still in existence. But it is clear that Twitch was interested in signing Shroud up and maybe having him and potentially Ninja, although I think it's unlikely that Ninja comes back, be the face of their brand in a way that they weren't apparently comfortable with Dr. Disrespect being that face. As The Verge reports, it's a big deal. Grizziak was one of the biggest names on Twitch pre-Mixer acquisition, and him leaving the site last October, not even a year, for then Greener Pastures, appeared to signal a worrying exodus of talent from Twitch onto other competing live streaming platforms like YouTube, Facebook Gaming, and Mixer. Ten months and one ongoing pandemic later, Mixer is gone, and the entire live streaming landscape has shifted again. The power is back with the platforms which have conspicuously stopped offering exclusive contracts to streamers. Greziak's return to Twitch is the first high-profile move. Now, I don't know if that's actually true. We know that Logic, a rapper, has been signed on to an exclusive deal with Twitch, not at the numbers that we were talking about with respect to folks like Ninja, but I strongly suspect these numbers are unlikely to be as high as we saw in that capacity anyway. Right, We already know that Greziak, that Shroud, has received all this money from Mixer. So Twitch can probably say, hey, you're getting this money anyway. Can we come in at a lower number? Nobody else has really been reported to be offering big numbers. There were some kind of rumored reports about Facebook Gaming potentially offering big numbers, but we really didn't get that verified by any legitimate sources. And so when you see these kinds of reports, it's worth noting we're not getting any numbers here. So 
I strongly suspect in the absence of Mixer, those numbers aren't going to rise to the level that they were at when Mixer existed because Mixer was the competing force here. But it's clear that Twitch was interested in signing Shroud back up. And I strongly suspect they were interested in, in signing Ninja back up. But there were some burned bridges when Ninja left. And Ninja is apparently pretty happy streaming for YouTube right now. You also see the parenthetical here from The Verge where it says Guy Dr. Disrespect Beam getting permanently banned from Twitch and then returning to stream on YouTube without a contract is a slightly different kind of movement. It's a very interesting description of Dr. Disrespect streaming on YouTube, right? I don't think that the reporting on Ninja was said in the same way. Ninja doesn't appear to be operating on any kind of contract with YouTube. He might be negotiating for an exclusive contract with Twitch right now or with anybody else right now, but he's not getting reported on in the same way that Dr. Disrespect is, which is, again, slightly problematic because nobody, none of these journalists, none of these outlets have anything to go on to suggest that Dr. Disrespect has done anything more than anybody else, whether it's Ninja or Shroud, in moving between these stations. We know he was banned by Twitch, but we don't know anything else. The Verge then waxes philosophic on the nature of the pandemic, on Twitch having more viewers because so many people are locked up at home, and then also saying, hey, we think this is a good idea because we think Twitch will make a lot of money. This was also reported on in Engadget, as well as a number of other places across the internet, where they confirm that it's signed up as an exclusivity contract, talk about the mixer destruction earlier this year, and then add this little bit of detail, which I hadn't seen before. Microsoft unceremoniously shut down Mixer in July, less than a year after signing numerous multi-million dollar deals with streamers. This left Shroud, Ninja, and other big names up for grabs, and it's been a waiting game to see where they all land. Facebook Gaming offered both Shroud and Ninja almost double the value of their Mixer contracts, though they both refused early on, according to esports lawyer Rod Breslau. Now, that's a name you might recognize. That's Slasher. We've seen him and we've seen his tweets. We've talked about how he's basically saying nothing out there online, and that's his prerogative, but that I don't view him as a terribly reputable source on these questions with respect to Dr. Disrespect. I'm also not sure that he's a lawyer. I haven't seen him referenced as a lawyer in any other capacity. Certainly, if he is a lawyer, he's playing fast and loose with things like disclosure and confidential sources in a way that I wouldn't expect from that particular position. But if he's not a lawyer and he's just the consultant that he's described on in other spaces, that's okay. Either way, none of this particular story that Facebook Gaming offered double the value of the Mixer contracts, which money they would have already received, makes a lot of sense. It is likely that if Facebook Gaming offered them anything, it was in connection with Microsoft sending people from Mixer over to Facebook Gaming, and that Facebook Gaming essentially wanted to amend their contracts to retain that exclusivity and quote unquote double by giving them another 100% over what they were already to receive when that's what's going to happen as free agents anyway, right? That Facebook Gaming, if we pretend that Shroud's Mixer contract was $10 million, as Rod Breslau hints at here, then Facebook Gaming would say, okay, we're going to take your agreement. We're going to sign you up. We're going to double that money and you're going to get $20 million for the same exclusivity period. Or you can just walk away and collect 10 for doing nothing and then figure out what you want your livelihood to be. You can see how Facebook Gaming's offer might not be that attractive. So saying that they were offered almost double the value of their Mixer contracts isn't quite the same as trying to figure out what Twitch might have offered someone like Shroud, because if Sh if Twitch offered something like 10 million or nine or eight or seven or six, you still have that effect of, of Shroud getting something like 16 or 17 or even 20 million dollars for performing the exact same function. So it's not really as clear as has been hinted at here, but I did want to address that because I haven't addressed that in this space before, which leaves us all with what? Right? I, I didn't put this video together just to preen about the correctness of what I had to say before. I do think it's important for all sides to kind of take all the angles from one of these various stories to not just jump out with speculation from any random Twitter source. I obviously think that's important. That's why virtual legality exists. But I can't say for sure exactly when Twitch started talking to Shroud, exactly what their thought process was. I can certainly imagine and can think that it was useful for them to clear up this money in terms of their overall budget, that Dr. Disrespect had undoubtedly done something that was potentially violative in kind of the gray area of the community guidelines, just as I would say that virtually every streamer associated with Twitch or Facebook gaming or YouTube gaming or anywhere else has probably committed foot faults, has probably stepped over the line that if YouTube or Twitch or anyone else wanted to, they could ban and otherwise punish these streamers under the broad terms of their community guidelines. That being said, I still think that Twitch 
moved forward with what they did with Dr. Disrespect on the understanding that the value of the contract was lessened and on the understanding that they would like to have that money available for a ninja and shroud that they would prefer to be in business with in any event. But at the end of the day, now Dr. Disrespect has 500,000 concurrent viewers on YouTube. He's clearly engaging with companies like High Res Studios and Rogue Company on what are marketing initiatives with his channel to do things like build maps, to get all that popularity, to make all that money. All of the Twitter rumor mongers and everyone else appear to have been wrong about their basic supposition, which was that we would never hear from Dr. Disrespect again. And whether or not Twitch has something real to claim on this breach, breach of contract or otherwise, Right now, the only one that appears to be laughing is Dr. Disrespect. Over the past couple of days, as he returned to YouTube, you saw certain of his sponsors come out, not just with kind of a, we'll still have you on the header image, we'll still keep you as a sponsored person, but actually put out tweets. Mountain Dew Game Fuel put out something that said, a toast to the return of the two-time. He goes by two-time champion of the world, I think, maybe. Two-time gamer of the year, streamer of the year. Taking a victory sip for the one and only Dr. Disrespect. Welcome back, champ. And this was echoed amongst a number of his sponsors. Dr. Disrespect is sitting there right now with nobody having any idea why Twitch did what they did. Kotaku and other articles coming out and saying, nobody at Twitch in the bulk of the people that work at that company know what Dr. Disrespect is claimed to have done and that the information, whatever it might be, is under lockdown, including Twitch's partnership contracts and sponsorship deals and things that would otherwise talk about things like this with Mountain Dew Game Fuel. So the only one laughing right now is, well, Shroud. Shroud is laughing. Shroud collected 10 plus million dollars from Microsoft and now he's collecting money directly from Twitch but also Dr. Disrespect, who despite all of this happening everywhere on the internet, all of this kind of pontificating and speculation is now looking for all the world at this moment as someone that was unfairly pilloried by a large multinational corporation owned by Amazon and that whose other sponsors suggest that maybe there isn't anything at all at the end of this other than a very, very ugly contractual divorce. This has been Virtual Legality for today. If you enjoyed this video, we are talking about these kinds of things all the time. We actually did two videos yesterday talking about the EA shareholder mutiny in which they voted down a kind of advisory vote to approve the executive compensation of Electronic Arts for the first time in that company's history, as far as I'm aware. And also the absolute messaging disaster of Xbox delaying Halo Infinite off of their Series X launch. So if you're interested in either of those topics, please do check them out. Otherwise, we talk about those kinds of things, business and law through the lens of pop culture, movies, music, television, and video games, as well as some more serious stuff, including executive orders, Supreme Court decisions, and the like. So please do like, subscribe, share, tell folks that we are here. Put these things on forums and otherwise that I can't get to. I love to have new people come in, agree with me, disagree with me, upvotes, downvotes. I love to have that engagement. Reasonable minds can differ. And I'm always looking forward to additional conversations on these topics and more. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.